Destination Nightmare, the B Movie Podcast. <laughs> All right, Destination Nightmare B Movie Podcast. We're back, and we got kind of a Roger Corman movie. I don't know if he directed it or not, but um, I think he had some kind. I did. I think he did some directing to save money. It was. And, uh, it's a beast with a million eyes, and yeah, it looks like it had four directors. Yeah, and there was some. They were trying to do it outside of the union, and something happened, and. It's got all the AIP people involved in it, Roger Corman, James Nicholson, and Sam Arkoff, but it was released under producer, uh, uh, ARC, Associate something or other. Yeah, Associate Releasing Corporation. Yeah, right. That's the distributor. The, the, uh, they, they did this and the Beast, the, the, which was the one the, from Under the Sea or whatever, the monster from the ocean floor or something like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, I think of. they were like a double feature. Yeah. And this is one of those that, like, they, they back then they would they would have a, a really good artist paint a poster and trick the the distributor and the people thinking this is going to be the movie, and then you get <laughs> you get a little puppet at the end. Yeah. Well, actually, he wanted to, according to the script, the monster was invisible. So he did, he felt well. I don't at least they don't have to build a monster. <laughs> but uh, I think the uh, distributing company or the production company were like, "Hey, wait a minute! I mean, the poster shows a monster, so we want a monster." So they had to go in quick. Yeah, they got Paul Blaisdell who did all the. This was his first. Was this his first monster. one? Okay. Yeah, and he said, you know, it had a the thing to do a whole bunch. He had a. It was an animatronic you could control from underneath or behind. Whatever. They could do a whole bunch of things, but they only had like 10 seconds of it in the movie where it's just moving its arms and then falling over. To me, it's like, I don't know why this movie was an hour and 20 minutes. It could have been easily 70 minutes and then it would have been perfect or whatever. You know what I mean? They just added another 10 minutes because it's like the beginning of this movie is all angst written, you know? Yeah. It's like, you got Paul Burtz, the husband. He has wife who's insane. Yeah. You got the daughter who's just like a regular kid. They got a German Shepherd called Duke, and they got some perverted half wit guy <laughs> living. <laughs> and you find out more about him later or whatever. You go, why do they have this this challenge person living there who like spends all day looking at dirty magazines or whatever. And and following the girl around, and uh, supposedly he's harmless. But yeah, he's, well, he's, yeah. He's you know, and, and then the mother's, like, all angry and t- lashing out at her daughter because I think the farm's, like, doing bad, and yeah. she didn't want to live out in the, in the desert it's, anyway. Yeah, there is a desert in the middle of nowhere. It's a um, date farm. Because I'm yeah. looking at, like, what the hell are they growing out there? So apparently those those were date trees. What are I mean? What are dates? Are they giant raisins or something? Yeah, something like that. They're like a really sweet fruit. Um, I don't know. They're about two inches long. They're they're very sweet. To me, they look like swollen cockles. So I'm not. They taste good, but I'm not. You have not, eaten them? Okay, I never had the. Uh... Chopped up, I'm okay, but you know, looking at a regular date, it's like, man, that looks like too much like a cockroach for me. Yeah, I mean, even raisins. I mean, I don't even care for them that much. You know, they're okay. Yeah. You know? So yeah. why would I want to eat a giant raisin? You know, when I don't even want to eat. What, what, what was that candy that you used to get? I never like raisinets. Is that what it was called? Raisinets. Yeah, I like raisinets. Yeah, the you chocolate did. candy. I used to get raisinets and goobers, and it, you get like a chocolate peanut butter and jelly vibe. Cool. I like goobers. Goobers were cool. And yeah, I like snow, cool. snow caps were good. Oh, they're the best. <laughs> snow caps are the best, man. <laughs> but raisin S just didn't just didn't do it for me, you know. Yeah. Or, or another one that I never got into as a as a cookie was the fig Newton. Were you a fig Newton guy? Yeah, I like fig Newtons. I used to cut off the breaded part and just eat the fig part. Oh my God! Wow, you're 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 better man than I, man. I just never got. <laughs> What, what? It was 
commercial. I forget the actor's name, but he was a character actor. And he dressed up as as a giant fig, and he did that Fig Newton dance, and he was sit, singing a Fig Newton song. I think I remember that, yeah. Well, funny as hell. That's when commercials were funny. The ad company, the uh, ad companies were uh, looking to entertain as well as get you to, to buy the product. Now, I don't know, you watch a commercial and you're like, what the hell are they selling? I can't figure out. When, when that, that, everybody's smart except the uh, dad. He's just some stupid dolt. Yeah, or or even worse ones. Let's, I'm not even going to go into it because it's like I see him and I'm going like, really? <laughs> I remember the first time I ate a fake Newton. This is so weird. It was when I was in elementary school. Yeah. I don't, I just, it's just a, I just brought back an old memory from like 50 years ago or something. And more. They had like Roman. They had Roman Day, so we had to dress up in togas and stuff. And of course, we ate fig Newtons. Yeah, oh, that's very Roman. <laughs> Like whatever, man. The the outside cake is really dry. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And it, it kind of sticks to the roof of your mouth, and you're like, the inside. I like this the sweet inside at the time. Oh, I haven't had a fig Newton in ages. Well, maybe now you know I brought back an old memory or something. Yeah. These are some in little packs of two. I don't even know if they do anymore. You know, like at the convenience stores or whatever. So. Yeah, anyway, so anyway, getting back getting back to the movie. <laughs> We've got this desert drama going on. Oh, there's also a uh, boyfriend, too, of the girl, right? Yes, He's a boyfriend? Yes. The second Darren, who's... A, I don't know if he was the sheriff or a deputy, or... I think he was the sheriff, but he was in love with the... He was the boyfriend of the daughter. Oh, and then there was that other guy who was raising cattle, you know, the old Oh, uh, the, old, the old geezer, yeah. And he would, they would get their milk from the old geezer and his, I don't know, his cow, Clarabelle. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, this, you know. This movie, though, it started out with a voiceover. Yes. And basically, it told you the whole plot of the movie. <laughs> yes. So there was like no surprise. It was yes. like you know, this alien came to Earth, looking to take it over, and with mind control. And first, he's going to do the dumb animals like the birds in the sky and stuff, and then the weak-minded people. And then he was going to take over the regular, the mind of the regular people, and he feeds on hate and anger and whatever. So, that's, yeah. he, so I think he was attracted to the housewife because she was. I mean, the first part of the movie, she was a royal. Oh bitch. my God! Yeah. Jeez. Snapping at everybody. Snapping at everybody. And, and the husband was like a real nice, mellow guy. You know, he yeah. was. Just, and and he was in he was in Paul Birch was in the other one what was the uh, the one where he plays an alien um, uh, uh oh um, uh yeah 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 where he plays like an alien he wears sunglasses the whole time he was like the original yeah. Men in Black not of this earth not of this earth yeah and he had the silver um, yeah that yeah so in that uh, one he was like a bad guy and this one he's like you know super lovey yeah, dad super lovey nice dovey dad. dad or whatever yeah. you know so his wife's like all bent out of shape and then like. You know, she's like snapping at everybody, and then one day she's sitting there. Oh, and and like and like like we talked about before, she gets mad at the daughter. The daughter decides to go out into the woods to take a, a dip in the water, and the old the the half wit per pervert guy yeah follows her along and is looking at her, and then she starts yelling at him, and he's getting all weird and freaky and. And, um, but she she does like him, and 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 they invite him over for dinner too, because he shows up at the house, like looking yeah, for food. He's, he's he's like a handyman or a, a helper to the guy on the farm. Yeah. But later we find old, out the real deal, but you yeah. know. Cabin. Yeah. Later on, you find out who who he was. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Like well, we, we won't we won't spoil it, but anyway. Yeah. So yeah. So there's there's that guy there, and you know, one day I think the wife is just doing her chores, baking a cake and being jerky or whatever, and then like a plane or something flies over and breaks yeah, the China. Yeah, you get that weird sort of hum, that whistling hum that you hear in a lot of these horror movies. And uh, it breaks every glass in the house. And uh, the, the father and the daughter had gone into town to the post office to get a package or something, and they come back. Oh, yeah, so the wife hears the weird hum 
and uh, breaks everything in the house. And then I think uh, the, the guy, the, the, the father, had gone out to do to look at the dates and water some irrigate. Well, well, it first hits the dog, right? The dog. Well, that that's yeah. The dog hears the weird whistling noise too, and he runs off. And the girls running around looking for him. And the father went out to irrigate something, and he's coming back, and suddenly all these birds are attacking him. So he gets in his truck, and then he drives to the old geezer with the cow and asking him if he heard a weird whistle and do... Uh, um, yeah, the humming strange noise or whatever. Yeah, do, do, he ever, has he ever heard of birds attacking? And he's like, no, I haven't. And then the cow is acting ornery and kicks over the milk. Yeah, and, and this is like, according to what I read, this is like, it's not the first one of the first animals attack movies, you know, as opposed to like, you know, I, I believe the birds attacking or, yes. you know, uh, an animal's going insane or whatever, you know. But I think the first one that gets, the, 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 well, like we said before, this, which, which, what ends up in the desert is like a little toaster looking thing or something like that, a little spaceship. <laughs> It's I guess it's of, not that little, but it looks little. You know, it's maybe like it's, three foot. Yeah, it's kind of just a weird metallic thing. It doesn't have much detail. And it's got, a, I don't know, lights on it. It's in the top spins around. And it gets like a, uh, like a slow strobe effect. And, and it seems like, and, and it changes the dog. The dog comes back and it gets yeah. kind of ornery. Yeah, he comes back vicious and he uh, goes after... The wife. The wife. And so she, like, trying to escape. The dog had... She tries to shoot him one time. Because yeah, the dog knows how to get into the house. So she yeah, grabs a... The daughter had talked the, taught the dog to open the screen door. So yeah. he gets in the house. So she gets out. She's knocking on the door then to the shed of the weirdo guy. And he won't let her in. So then she, she grabs runs, an axe. Yeah, she picks up an axe. She runs to the woods shed, shed and you see the dog come running in. And then you hear a scream. <laughs> and uh, the father and the daughter come back from town with packages and stuff. And says, uh, oh, the lights are out. Like, what's going on? And they, they find the uh, wife in the kitchen just sort of sitting there blank looking. And, uh, you know, they're like, what's going on? And, you know, and the daughter's like, where's uh, Duke going? And the wife goes, oh, don't let her go to the woodshed and... And uh, so the father goes out to take care of the dog, and the daughter goes, "What? Why is there a gun on the floor? Why is everything broke? Where's Where's Duke? Oh, wait, what happened? Oh, I, I need to know. He's my dog." So she runs out and she hears that the dog, and she sees the dog, and then uh, she comes back saying, "Oh, the old that old weirdo loony guy must have killed him." And the mother's like, "Well, you have to understand, it's." It's like something happened to him, and he he attacked me, and then, oh, you killed my dog. I had to, so she goes running away. Yeah, because when when she was hiding in the in the shed, and the dog came in, and she screamed. You thought the dog had gotten. You thought the dog got her, but but she ended up. She was like, yeah. you know, nasty enough to get the dog with an axe or whatever. You know, so. <laughs> so he's that he's all suspicious, like you know, something's going on. You know, he's looking. Uh, and he's he's pondering. He's thinking there's some there's something else going on. They're just animals and dogs going crazy. Yeah. And then the boyfriend comes in, starts getting into the picture, whatever he is, a sheriff or something like yeah. that or whatever. And then like, and then there's 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 and then it seems like it's affecting. Is, is it at this point that it starts affecting the the handyman? It hits animals first. It hits birds. It hits the animals and the. It even hits the cow, the next door cow. Yeah, the old man's cow, who tur which which turns on the old man, and yeah, eventually, yeah, it eventually turns on him and kills him. Um, she goes out looking. Well, wait a minute. Oh, she's she's upset, so she goes out for a, after she finds her dog was killed. She goes out walking in the desert. the farm desert yeah. area, and then she she hears that weird humming, whistling noise. The daughter the, you're talking about. Yeah, the daughter. So then she starts walking, and the old weirdo guy, he hears it, and he start, starts walking. So they sort of converge 
in the desert. Then they don't get to them that weird spaceship yet. So then, like, he gets there, and, like, she kind of wakes up, and then she leads him back. And he's like, what were you doing out there? And the father says to her, what were you doing out there? And she goes, I don't know. It's like I was, uh, you know, standing on the farm, and then suddenly, I, like, I seemed to, I heard that weird noise, and I seemed to black out. And the next thing I know, I was there in the desert, and uh, I think call him him, the handyman. Yeah, him, him yeah. Was there, and... Um, that's his pronoun. Yeah. <laughs> him, him, him. Him. And, uh, you know, I brought him back. So he's all like, hmm, hmm, hmm. So then it's like the next day you see him <laughs> write a letter to the Veterans Administration in California. And then he, he goes into town. Or well, he's, yeah, he's going to go into town, but first he's going to stop off and get milk. Uh, From the old man. From the old man, and uh, but but uh, you'd see the old man getting up, and he's you know getting putting his clothes on and jacket and getting ready to milk the cow, and she comes out and attacks the cow, attacks him and kills him. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, there's one point where the the wife she's gonna feed the chickens, so she goes into the chicken coop and uh, she starts feeding them, and the, suddenly the chickens all start attacking her. You know, she goes running into the house. So they're not sure what the hell's something's going on. So, um, oh god, what happens next? Well, the guy comes back, the boyfriend comes back, and he starts getting involved in the storyline. And is that the point where, like, the 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 handyman goes in the car with him, and they take off, and then the handyman knocks him out? And then goes back into the car and keeps going or whatever. I seem to remember a scene where like the handyman like knocks him yeah, out. That, or yeah. Before that though, the father comes back and he hears that the chicken attack. Oh, he comes back. The 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 wife and the daughter they're getting ready for a birthday, and they see the farmer's cow, so they go out to get it, and then the cow goes to attack him. And in the meantime, the father had was had come back and he shot and killed the cow. Right, right. Then right. he tries to send the the wife and the uh, uh, the daughter into town, and he's going around looking for looking to see what's happening. And again, birds start attacking him, and then um, they attack his car too. Right? Don't they puncture the tires attack, of the car like, or something? Wife in the house. Because the birds had attacked their car, and they right. ran into the windscreen, so they couldn't couldn't see. So they came back to the house, and then they try to call the boyfriend, who's the sheriff. And then you see birds attacking the the uh, telephone wires, and they they dive into it and it short circuit. They kill themselves by and short circuit the phone line, or whatever. So they're waiting, and in the meantime, the loony guy has gone to where the ship is, and. You see the, you know, the strobing lights, and he's getting instructions or something. So he goes back, lets the air out of the tires, and then he starts walking towards town. And then Larry, the boyfriend, is coming to um, to uh, to the to the farm, but he doesn't know what's going on, and he he sees the loony guy in in the standing there. And, you know, so he's like, what are you doing? I almost ran you over. Get in. So he gets in the, uh, the back, and, and Larry's driving, and then suddenly the, the loony guy grabs him by the throat and knocks him, knocks him out, and the car crashes. So then he goes out walking. In the meantime, the girl, the daughter, she, she decides to go out to walk the to town to look for Larry because she's worried that something's happened to him. And uh, she goes out. She meets the loony guy. He picks, he knocks her out somehow, and uh, he, he carries her. Starts carrying her into the desert to the. Because for some reason, the 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 beast with the million eyes really wants her bad, you know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe she, her mind is pliable. Or they don't really go into why. No. So uh, he's there, and uh, you know, he takes it to the machine, and the lights are. In the meantime, uh, the guy Larry wakes up because he wasn't killed, and he goes to the farmhouse, and they uh, 
you know, they s- discover that uh, the loony guy had taken the daughter into the desert. So then uh, he sends Larry back to town for reinforcements or something. So he and the father and the wife go uh, into the desert. Looking for the daughter. And yeah, and they're following the footsteps. So then they uh, get to the machine, so it's a spaceship, and uh, the, 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 the loony they... guys carry in the daughter to the spaceship. And the, the guy is... Um, yeah, he's talking to the loony guy, and he's telling them not to do it, you know. And then yeah, the, yeah, the loony I, guy ends up like... He Carl. He says, yeah. come on, Carl, don't do it. So the guy turns around, and then the machine makes a lot of noise, and he turns back to the machine, and the guy says, Carl, she's my daughter, bring her back. So then he, he brings her to the father and, you know, gives him to her. And then the machine makes a high-pitched noise, and the, the, and it kills him. the guy dies. So then... The, 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 the three, three the three of them other, right are standing there. Yeah, the daughter's uh, like the daughter's like knocked out you know she's yeah, out they, of it they kind of go away and um, find like a place to sort of it's like a windmill or something you know one of those windmills you see in, in farms and they're they're like well we're, we're kind of safe here for now and it says and she's like what's going and she yes the husband what's going on and he's like you know you called him Carl and he says well Carl was. Uh, in his uh, platoon or infantry or whatever in the war and he got injured and to save him they had to take part of his brain and you know he decided to to uh, uh, have him take care of him so that no one would make fun of him and they're like uh, but you know so it, it seems like he was kind of deducing what was going on he says he, he kept calling the alien the master brain, and it's like it seems to be able to control brains. And uh, um, yeah, the thing about Carl was the, the, it, it cut off part of his brain, but it didn't cut off the horny part of his brain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that horny part was still like, or maybe, <laughs> may, or maybe that was the other, the little brain that was talking. I don't know, but <laughs> so they're they're talking, and he's giving his theories about what what is going on and how like something's controlling the brains of the animals and Carl and stuff and then you hear like a voiceover it's the alien talking and he says yes you're right uh, you know our planet is dying and we're, we've sent out emissaries to find other planets where we can feed we have no physical bodies we're all mental energy and um yeah, and then they start talking about how like they came from another planet. Of course, they usually they come from another planet that's dying, and Earth was very similar. And yeah. you know they they need you know again hosts to like you know to live again or whatever you know that. And then and then the 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 the, the, the parents start talking about you know I, I guess this race that maybe I'm wrong. Did this race talk about something where they they were evolved, but they were kind of cold. They didn't have love or whatever. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they evolved and they started feeding off hate. Yeah. Anger. And you know, he, he was the reason why he came there is because he was attracted to the anger of the wife. <laughs> he <laughs> was angry. And then he found the, um, the guy, Carl, who, uh, to, to be easy to control simple too. brains yeah because they, they were doing they're starting working they're starting working with simple brains right. and working their way up to more complicated yeah, and so and it, that's I think that's why he wanted the daughter to, to figure out because her brain was young and pliable over them so the, the father's sitting there listening to this and thinking he says oh there's something uh, we that, have that that you don't it's it's love and you'll never understand that and the guy goes and the brain goes love love is a weakness and uh, you know we will yeah. come and take over you <laughs> whatever yeah so um and that's when you start when you see the little puppet guy right yeah so after 75 minutes into the movie yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah they confront the alien and, and he holds it says we know we have to stick together and form a bond and, and we have to save the daughter with love and stuff so he starts walking towards the um, 
the spaceship, and then, yeah, you see the panel open up, and then you see the puppet, and superimposed over it is a big eye. Yeah, they had to do it's something assume, to make it look a little weird, you know, because it's not yeah, a little you puppet. you assume it's like the mind of the creature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's happening, the puppet thing, whatever. And, um, he, he's walking toward, oh, you'll never, uh, you'll never conquer us, because we have love, we band together, and then uh, after going, but they arguing back and forth. Suddenly, the little alien puppet dies, and then um, you hear a whirring noise, and then the spaceship takes off because it was set on automatic, so it takes off, and they're watching it. And um, but did it die? Well, yeah, yeah, it he, didn't. He, well, it said he died. Yeah. And then she's, and then the wife goes. Well, I thought they didn't have any bodies. He says, "Well, they probably needed a physical body to run the ship, so he probably inhabited a being from his planet to to manipulate the ship." Yeah, but, right, right. But that died. He says, "Well, at last he's dead." He says, "Is it? Maybe he's not dead." And then they look down. And they see a rat. So apparently, the master brain went into the rat. And uh, um, and then an eagle comes up. Yeah, well, he's gonna shoot the eagle. He goes, wait, look! And then an eagle flies down and captures and kills the rat and flies away. And he goes, and he's gonna shoot the eagle. And she goes, no, don't, don't shoot it. That's an eagle. And he goes, hmm, that is an eagle. There, we're, we don't have any eagles around this spot. Where do you think it came from? I don't know, but it saved us. You know, at the end. <laughs> I mean, to me, it's like it would have been more interesting if that concept of, let's just say, the alien had taken over the body of him yeah. and him was going around doing all this, you know, horrible, you know, weird stuff or whatever, which he did a little bit, but not not to the extent. It would yeah. have been a lot more interesting than just kind of all this talky, talky, talky and theory. And even though yeah. there was the animals attack and, you know, there was like you know, a little bit of action here and there, but I would have liked to have seen the alien uh, presence take over a physical person and have them being, you know, a little more menacing. But I guess, you know, the the story, the end of the, the one of the, the, the punch, you know, the, the, the things of the story is the, the fact that he was one of his pals in the army, so if you killed him, you know, I don't know. You know yeah. Whatever. yeah, it was, it got a little convoluted. At the Very end. much. For a simplistic yeah, yeah, it probably, movie, it probably would have been better. Like you know, if you said it, it took over him or Carl, and had Carl suddenly act all really super intelligent and doing things. Yeah, and, something like that. It's like all of a sudden he's like really smart. Where did that come from? Yeah, exactly. So uh, I actually yeah. thought, I actually thought that the alien had taken over the wife. Yeah, that's what I thought too. At because first. she's changed during the movie, right? At some point she started yeah. being real bitchy. She started being nice or whatever, and even her daughter said at one point, "Mom, you're back again. You know, you're yeah, nice oh, again." Oh, I feel like I have a family again. Yeah, it just seemed weird. And I, based on I, I, when when you first hear, you, you hear the voiceover, so yeah, you, you, you kind of get the impression this already happened when the movie starts, and that's why the wife was bitching. Mm, but okay. it just seemed she was just I don't know cranky and tired from living on a failing farm. Yeah, well, you know, there's other things, too, you know, that might have affected her, but, you know, but, you know, whatever. I mean, it was just weird how she changed at one point. I guess she had to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because of what was going on. And she wasn't, it wasn't just, she can't just, she just can't be worried about her, you know, not liking where she's living. Now it's like, you know, this presence alien yeah. thing or whatever, you know, so. Yeah, and they also, when they were first talking about the farm, how it seemed to have this, depressing yeah. feeling. I, again, I thought the alien had already landed. Yeah. But that, when, when you heard that noise and all the dishes in the, and glasses in the house broke, uh, that was the the spaceship landing. So it's, it, it's, it's weird. It's like you're telling me the story and then you're sort of showing, in the movie you're showing me the story. Uh, you know, yes. It would have been much better if he had already been there. And yeah, like this, said, this, I, the, the, the movie that this was, a double feature was, was Monster from the Ocean Floor. It just went into my noggin right now. Uh, was that the giant octopus? No. 
No, no, no. It was just some monster. I don't remember what it looked like, but I remember that was a double feature that okay. they had. A different director for the other one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was it. So, no, the one with the octopus was it came from beneath the sea, wasn't it? The giant octopus. Maybe Monster from the <laughs> Ocean Floor had an octopus too. I don't remember, but the one that I remember was a Harryhausen one. It came from beneath the sea, where the octopus the only had five tentacles yeah, five times, instead yeah. of six or whatever, because I guess they couldn't afford it, or Harryhausen didn't know. I don't know. But. Yeah, uh, yeah, there were a couple of monsters from the ocean floor thing, you know. So uh, it's it's kind of hard to figure out which one. Sometimes or remember them. But these know. were these were the these. This is right before they became AIP. Okay. And then AIP started doing Creature from the Haunted Sea. That may be one that you're thinking of. Yeah. Which was, it was another goofball movie, which was like some guy, you know, one of the guy kind of acting like Humphrey Bogart. And then there was like The Last Woman on Earth. And they, they sound, they have really great titles. They're okay yes. movies. But yeah. the name Roger Corman is involved with them, so they get... You know, they, they they become part of that, you know, legendary thing. And Corman's still around, so, you know. I don't know yeah, if there, was, uh, there was one, I think the one I'm, I'm thinking of, it, it looked like a sort of giant iguana on the on the sea floor. Oh, look. Giant iguana on the sea floor. Yeah, or, you know, I, I, so it was some kind of giant lizard. It was definitely a costume, and... Well, there's a lot well, in the 50s that was like, you know, giant animal time or whatever, you know. Yeah. And it was Godzilla Day the other day, too, on the 3rd. So I was like, yay, Godzilla, you know. But, yeah, there was a lot of that atomic radiation spawning giant monsters. And I'm just waiting to see, like, when that's going to happen in real life, you know what I mean? I hear <laughs> I hear stories about, well, I hear stories about, you know, because scientists are mad scientists, a lot of them, you know, I believe anyway. Not all, but a lot of them are. And I hear stuff about them taking, like, dinosaur bones and trying to clone them or whatever, you know, like a real Jurassic Park. So I wouldn't, nothing surprises me anymore, you know. It's getting yeah, so. Must, must have from the seafloor looked like a giant octopus. O ocean floor, yeah. It had a big head okay. and one eye. Okay, that was Monster from the Ocean Floor. Okay, there you go. So, yeah. That was and a poster was, anyway. <laughs> Yeah, and there's another. There was there was a couple where uh, you had a beach party and then monsters came. Oh, monster! From, a, a horror party beach. Yeah. And monster on the surf. Yeah. Or the, or the beach girls and the monster. Hey, we should watch that one. That one's goofy as all get out. You know, the beach <laughs> okay. girls and the monsters. It, it was it was it was funny because that I I have it as the beach girl and the monsters, but it was also released as monster on the surf the television. I don't know if there was any changes. But I did record it off of television as my, and then when I watched, when I got the DVD of, you know, uh, Beach Girls and the Monster, I go, wait a minute, this is the same movie. Why'd they retitle it? Well, to get it on TV and make people think that it was a different movie, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah that looked like a, that was a creature of the Black Lagoon wannabe. Oh, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. One of them looked like he had hot dogs coming out of his mouth or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there was a bunch of really bad monster well they became movie. teenage movies you know like yeah. in the 60s you know there was those and uh, there was one that wasn't a teenage movie that was kind of cool it was called Destination Inner Space did you ever see that one yeah I've heard the title of probably but it had like a real like a the, the monster and it was an even more like mutated angry creature from the Black Lagoon type guy it was in color and it was like 64 or something like that it wasn't bad it was all right, you know. I mean, it's like. Oh uh, yeah, that was a, that was a cool monster, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The movie was okay, but it was all right. But yeah, no, no, they had a bunch of, but um, you know, after, this after Corman and them starting IP, they had, uh, what was the other one? Invasion of the Saucer Men, which was little guys, you know. Those, and they had he conquered the world, which was that carrot monster that was kind of supposed to be big, but was kind of little. So it was all these Paul Bladesdell. Yeah. Guys, and then the she creature, which was the female version of the creature. Oh, yeah. here's the other creature movie you're thinking of, the monster from Piedras Blancas. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was a meaner kind of creature guy, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, where uh, you see him uh, with the human head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that famous picture, yeah. <laughs> and the lighthouse and all that crap. 
the guy that the, the professor used to feed him from the lot. That was a good one too. You know, another cheapy good one, but that was another creature from the Black Lagoon one. So yeah, there was plenty of them. But the she creature was different because it was like the lady got hypnotized and she went reverted back to a like a prehistoric monster or something. Yeah, and, and somehow by hypnotizing her, he was able to create. The sea creature, sea creature that would come out of the sea. And... Yeah, it was a, it was imaginative. But back in the fifties, they had that whole that story of that lady Bridie Murphy or something that was hypnotized and supposedly went back into a into a former life and came back or something. And they took that whole oh. sensationalized storyline and they turned it into a few movies or whatever, you know. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, those those creature movies are really cool. You know, yeah. they always there's, just fun. Old, there's another one, the hideous sun demon. Sun demon. Well, they could the only guys. get them from the 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 waist up. They didn't have yeah. enough to the pants. So. Yeah, that was always a sign that they had a lo- lower budget uh, uh, than they expected. There was another one, the, the uh, alligator people. With Lon like, Chaney Jr. Yeah, he wore pants too. Yeah, the costume from the waist up was cool. And then from the waist down, he's wearing pants and shoes. And it's like, yeah, he's wearing like Dockers or something. You know, it's like, okay, <laughs> they, yeah, the alligator people. Yeah, they did that with like the Neanderthal man. Yeah, there's another one. The monster on campus, same thing. He had big, you know, big upper body and his shirt was ripped and stuff, but he's he's uh, still wearing like regular pants. And well, hell, know, even the wolf shoes. man wore pants, you know, and a shirt. <laughs> I mean, later on they they had they had more prosthetic <laughs> parts, but well, you know, like uh, what's his face, uh, Oliver Reed in uh, Curse of the Werewolf or whatever. Yeah. But you know, Lon had like a like a like a nice nice combination, you know, a shirt and slacks, and it's free. It's, he didn't have shoes because I guess his big feet kind of like busted the shoes or whatever. But okay. uh, oh, and then there was that other one. With Bella, Return of the Vampire, where he was playing Dracula, but they couldn't call him Dracula. He had a werewolf assistant, and he wore a suit, too. So there's a long, long history of monsters, but the creature was fully nude. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> he was fully exposed. He didn't have any, like, junk to look like, but he was pretty horny, too, for uh, Julie Adams or whatever. Yeah, well, know. who wouldn't be? Yeah, who wouldn't be? Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> But, yeah, the monster from the ocean floor, it's all right. It's okay. It's a little long. The, the acting's kind of okay. It's a little long, but it's worth checking out because it's the first of its kind, I believe. I believe it's the first Corman-inspired monster movie, I think. Oh, okay. So, you know, it's worth checking out or whatever. And, and I found a nice copy on YouTube that was like a 1080 uh, resolution or whatever, and I was able to watch it on the big TV. So there's a couple of them, but... The one that I found was nice, so it was cool to watch on the TV or whatever, you know. So, but yeah, yeah, fun stuff. I don't know if I want to watch Monster from the Ocean Floor, but maybe another time we will, you know, because uh, yeah, it's, you can only watch these so much, you know. But yeah, but th- but in the future, yeah, I remember that one being kind of boring too. But I think there was more monster in it. <laughs> I think anyway, you know. And and the one I think uh, Creature from the Haunted Sea, the creature was like some goofy looking. It was another creature from the Black Lagoon type thing, but it was like the the junkiest looking one you ever saw. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. I think it was uh, they were looking for gold or something. Something like that. Yeah. And um, he so he created some myth that there was a there was a monster in in that area of the sea, and it turned out there actually was a monster in the. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Sea. Right. It's yeah. killing people and stuff. Yeah, goofball, goofball movies. But anyway, yeah. So that was it. That's it. Uh, Beast with a million eyes. You didn't have million eyes, okay? No. The poster was pretty cool, though. You know. But the, I can't. I can't remember seeing this. I must have been like seven or eight. Probably seven. On Chiller Theater or something. Yeah, Chiller Theater or Creature Feature or whatever. And not knowing what the hell was going on and waiting for the monster. That's I mean, always title beast with a million eyes. I'm expecting something with a friggin' million eyes on it, you know, just not that it could read minds and you know. The thing about these movies too is that you would see stills 
in famous monsters and you say, Oh man, that is so cool, I gotta watch that and then yeah. exactly happens what we're talking about. The yeah. scam. The poster that tricks you to go in to see it. The famous yeah. monsters yeah. picture that tricks you to want to see it. The the most infamous one from Famous Monsters is the poster to Frogs. You know that movie Frogs yeah. in the seventies? Yeah. Everybody thought there was gonna be a giant frog eating people. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh-uh. Yeah, it didn't happen. No, there were animals, and there were frogs, and there was some kind of nature, you know, turning on, you know, humans. But that big, that big poster never happened. So yeah, it never happened. Sucks. Yeah. And I actually went to the theater to see it, and I felt really. Oh, did you really? Oh yeah, I was playing in my local theater. I was like, oh man, they're playing frogs. I got the poster. I got to see this thing. And no, no. Other ones delivered, but not 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 frogs. But you know what? It's not a bad movie. In no, it's pretty good. It could but, be a little shorter, like you said. But not as a kid. Not as a kid. No. Angst and and whatnot. They could cut the opening monologue. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, a couple of changes in dialogue to clear up what the hell's going on. But yeah, for the most part, it was pretty good. Yeah, frogs is all right. But anyway. Maybe we'll watch it one day. I don't think we did that on the other show. I don't know. I don't remember so many, so many episodes. But anyway, yeah. all right. Well, that's it for now. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. We'll find something else to watch. Uh, hopefully, something that looks good like this one, you know, on YouTube or whatever. But yeah. it's also on Amazon too. So uh, I yeah. believe it's on Amazon Prime. But anyway, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. And in the meantime, while we're gone, we ask you to watch more. B-movies. And listen to my creaky chair. <laughs> <laughs>
once a normal, voluptuously beautiful woman. She drove into a nightmare of horror and saw descending from the sky a titanic monster whose fearsome touch became a frightful curse. from unexplored secret stratus. This giant, harder than steel piston, disgorges strange creatures, inundating our world, twisting the emotions of women, distorting our men. This is a piece we got off the mare. Reflex action like a snake. Cut a snake in half and the two pieces go off in different directions. These things take over a man's mind? He becomes a... A robot? A machine taking orders? Join the hunt for the hiding place of terror. Find the breeding place of these globs of destruction. In feeding the mouth parts, rupture the cells, convey the food to the stomach by a, a pumping action. Oh. Ah! 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 an adventure that will burst your blood vessels with suspense. See, the brain eaters. 